Hi everybody, it's Gail Banks here. I'm doing a practice run on the Banks Power 360. This is information video. In other words, I'm not selling, I'm just telling. So I hope you enjoy this practice run. Today I'm gonna to talk about an intercooling uh, transfer. I'm kind of ripping an intercooler idea out of a marine diesel and moving it to a marine big block Chevy. Uh, those of you who think I only do diesel, I never touched a diesel till 1978, but I've been doing gasoline since 1958 and turbocharging since the, since the mid 60s. So here we go. Here's what I'm doing. Here's a marine mock-up that I'm doing with a uh, Duramax, this one would be a seven liter, uh, 427 incher. And normally on top of these ram tubes that you see under this uh, blower, uh, on top of those ram tubes would not be a blower, which we're mocking up for another idea I've got, but it would be this casting over here. And this casting sits on top of the ram tubes and has a intercooler core inside of it turbochargers or blower blow into the back of it which is facing away from us up through the core and into the camelback top and and do uh, the, the air does a 180 into those ram tubes i showed you earlier so you can see where that guy sits up there so on top of this casting i've got rails to mount a supercharger so you start to get the drift. I can do a supercharged uh, intercooled setup. I can do a supercharged slash turbocharged or super turbo setup. There's a lot of different ways to go here. So let me show you. The core out of that is going to end up in, in something I'm playing with here with this big block Chevy. Now, on the big block Chevy, you see some of my uh, exhaust manifolds, which, which have a water-cooled flange, water-cooled port. These I developed for offshore racing, oh, I don't know, four decades ago. Uh, but the design is still current, the port configuration is still current, uh, and the airflow capability is still current, or exhaust flow in this case. This is going to be a twin turbo, but there's something really cool going on here, and that is uh, our latest turbo design. This is what I call the centerline series of the Banks Sidewinder Turbo. This one has a map width enhancing compressor uh, anti-surge system in it. This one will come standard with billet wheels. You can see one of my wheels in there. And also it will have uh, on-center turbine housing and on-center compressor discharge, hence centerline. The whole idea here is a nice symmetrical look. And on the back, this black printed item you see here is the heat shield housing. It will be either brushed or polished stainless, depending on whether you polish the compressor. Uh, the risers, what we call exhaust risers, uh, can accommodate wastegates. So there's quite a bit going on here. Here's our new turbine housing. Uh, as you can see, it's also on center. And inside of that heat shield I just showed you, there's a heat blanket which has half inch ceramic encased in a, a, a basalt outer uh, and, and retained inside with, with a, a large stainless snap ring. All of this will be a lot prettier, you know, once that stainless is polished up. So let me walk you into, uh, into the drafting room and we'll take a look at what's going on. Essentially, we're gonna walk down here and we're gonna look at some engines. Back in the day, there's, there's one of my big block Chevy offshore racing engines, which got banned by the American Powerboat Association for about 25 years. Now you can now turbo again but these were carbureted, and these had run hundreds, in fact, thousands of miles at wide open throttle, making a nominal thousand horsepower. 
Today, that might not sound like a big number to you guys who run three seconds, uh, dyno tests, but <laughs> trust me, making a big block Chevy live for that long a time is very rough, very rough, hard to do. There's an intercooler there uh, on the, over the manifold, intake manifold. And here is that manifold I showed you. This is a marine engine uh, layout. You can see the rails on top of the manifold to mount that blower. So we'll walk on down the room here a little bit and I'll show you what we're up to. Uh, oh, well, yeah, there's a blower on top of the whole system. That's a marine super turbo. Uh, we built a pair of those and tested them at a 40 footer a while back. We were going for uh, hopefully some military business with these. So here's what we've got going on. We're going to take a tunnel ram for the big block Chevy, a serious tunnel ram. We're in, injecting it. It's got injection uh, high in the ports, which I like, and it gives us the opportunity to put another set of nozzles down lower. And we're going to put a casting on top that looks kind of like that on top of that flange. And inside will be this heat exchanger. This is our intercooler core made out of cupro nickel. So you can run this thing in salt water. And then there's caps that go on the ends. One it, it is a turnaround cap and the other one lets water in and out. And we're looking for, oh, 70, 80 gallons a minute of flow through here. There's one of our manifold castings uh, ready to get machined. So there's something pretty exciting here coming from banks. Uh, I, th I think that, uh, oh, there's an LS3. I don't know uh, where that's going. So anyhow, interesting stuff coming. The comment here is it diesel or gasoline, big block Chevy, Duramax, Cummins, Ford. I don't care what you're doing. The intercooler don't care. Whole job of this thing is to make another four or 500 horsepower by increasing density. That's the whole idea. Intercoolers are density machines, just like blowers and turbos. See you next time, Gail Banks. Insider News 360.